When construction was completed on the Eric Williams Financial Complex in 1986, it was one of the tallest buildings in the English-speaking Caribbean. At the time, it was an outstanding example of modern architecture and also a very physical manifestation of Trinidad and Tobago's economic growth and development. The oil boom was in full swing when architects Anthony C. Lewis and Associates were commissioned to design a monumental financial complex in 1979. The Eric Williams Financial Complex, I think, is a, a monumental modern work. I think it represents in many ways the, the sort of a, a, a prominent symbol of independence. You know, it's closely associated with the political and social and economic idealism, I think, that characterized that time. To be chosen to do this project was, was of course a, a great honor for us, a privilege in fact, for us to be designing such an important building both in the, in the country and in the Caribbean. It was the largest um, project that was going to be built in the Caribbean by local consultants. So it meant actually opening an, a second office. We had to build a vault to keep the drawings in because you could imagine if there, there I say a fire or something occurred in the middle of all of this, all of that work would have been lost. New ground was broken in the design and construction of Trinidad and Tobago's first skyscraper. However, the project presented many challenges to the architects. The building's dual functions as the central bank and the Ministry of Finance were key factors influencing their design. As two completely independent entities, however, part of the brief was that there be a clear division between the two buildings with separate electrical and water systems. As the project progressed, the original design had to be adapted and altered. The design of the buildings, the Twin Towers, wasn't always Twin Towers. It actually started off as a central bank being a 22-story building and the Ministry of Finance, which was on Independence Square, of a lower building of about seven or eight stories. When the governor presented the designs, the original designs in that form, to the Prime Minister of the day, which was Eric Williams, he insisted that no, no other building should be taller than the government Ministry of Finance building. And that led us to change the design to Twin Towers. So that's the story of how they became Twin Towers. Another major factor impacting on construction was that the 22-story buildings, which were being built on sandy reclaimed land, had to be earthquake resistant. A strong foundation was critical and it required a very deep basement to allow the pilings to reach bedrock. Stability in case of an earthquake also came from another aspect of the design. The other effect of earthquakes design was really um, to design a building that was very stiff in, in each direction. And those X crosses, that you see, the X braces we call them, that go up the buildings in both directions, and, and it was north, south, and east, west, those keep the building very stiff in both directions so that in, in the case of an earthquake, those braces then come into play. They, they don't actually serve much of a function normally, but it, it helps to keep the building from twisting in an earthquake. In designing the Twin Towers, architects also considered the impact such a monumental building would have on the national psyche. The lower podium blocks at the base of the building were designed to allow people to walk around the structure without feeling intimidated. These lower blocks also relate to the smaller buildings that are adjacent. Another very important aspect of the design um, was to do with the, the public space that was formed between these buildings. Uh, and, and to explain that, I mean, it wasn't long after Trinidad became a republic. A republic 
suggest that everything is open, you know, that people, the public was then allowed to come into the square to experience the buildings. It wasn't surrounded by a wall or fence as it is today. The brief for the central bank included an auditorium and concert hall, which was also a civic contribution aimed at enhancing the performing arts in Trinidad and Tobago. To me, as an architect, having look at, looked at things over time, the auditorium is an interesting space. It's stylistically something that is very much from the 70s. You know, the design driven by geometry and uh, using kind of fairly unconventional forms to use the space or to, to fashion the space as its function for an auditorium. And I've spoken there a couple of times and attended events there, and I think it works very, very well. The building of the Eric Williams Financial Complex was not without controversy. Constructing a glass building facing the west in the tropics proposed a serious challenge. And differences of opinion regarding materials led to the eventual termination of ACLE as lead architects on the project. They were replaced by the practice newer Lewis Broadbridge, which completed the project. Opened in 1986, the Eric Williams Financial Complex still stands as one of the finest facilities of its type in the country. The Money Museum was opened to the public in December 2004. Its exhibits tell the story of the history of money from its earliest origins to the function of the central bank today. I think uh, buildings like this, and particularly this building, had an enormous impact on society. You, know, you see it, it represented on banknotes. Um, I think it represented in many, many ways an important symbol of, of modernity and the advancement of society. And I think that people identify in many ways, maybe subconsciously with those, with those images, they, they represent in many ways ideas of development, of moving forward, of society advancing. The Eric Williams Financial Complex is a key part of Port of Spain's modern architectural landscape. The architects understood the significance and impact such a building would have on society, and this is reflected in its design. Today, the Twin Towers are integral to our understanding of what our capital city looks like. <laughs>